All right, let's go. We've got the final lineup of the 2020 Mr. Olympia, courtesy of Fitness Network. So let's roll through this and see what we can find. Um, let's go through the top top competitors in this uh, endeavor here. All right, let's go. Number 21, Anton Valignier. I personally think this is one of the uh, – comeback stories in bodybuilding in a long, long time. Uh, Anton went through a lot of trouble and had a apparent drug problem, was on the street, homeless. Um, you've seen him do an interview, I think, on Dave Palumbo's site, RX Muscle. And, you know, he's put on a lot of muscle. I've always thought he had a great physique. He's a great athlete. You see him doing, you know, deadlifts with backflips and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, sometimes bodybuilding with these drugs and chemicals and the pressure, um, it can kind of get to your brain and you know, kind of destroy the image of what you tried to portray. Uh, Anton's done fairly well. He's got a really good physique. He looks kind of flat in that picture right there, but that's okay in the Toronto Pro. I think that's the one show he did win to qualify, um, if I'm not mistaken. But look for Antoine to place, uh, I'd say probably top 10 if he dials it in, just based on his structure alone. Um, he looks like a good, great competitor. Hats off to him. Number 20, Lucas. Austin Dill. Lucas has been around for a while, typically one of the better conditioned athletes around. Lacks a little bit of structure, narrow clavicles, kind of like Phil Heath, but if you notice between him and Phil, uh, the one thing that does not stand out is his delts. He has overpowering arms, a little less shoulders, good chest, good quads, good sweep. Uh, looks good for most angles because of his conditioning. Uh, maybe a little bit smaller for compared to most of the guys out there. Let's look at number 19. James Hollinshed, big name, a big up-and-coming guy. Uh, looks like, from what I keep hearing, he's going to do pretty well. A lot of muscle. Nathan Diasha. Nathan, I don't know what to say about Nathan. He looks like he's going to do well all the time, and sometimes he doesn't, and it's kind of awkward. He's got a good physique, good structure. They say there's a little bit of imbalances here and there, thicker waistline, great back, great legs, good delts. Um, been in trouble a little bit here and there in the past. So let's see how he does in this show. Number 17. Regan Grimes just qualified, right? Uh, Regan's one of those guys who come up at the uh, 300 mark and decided that he didn't want to be 300 pounds anymore and be a big dude. So he scaled it down to do classic physique. Uh, looks like he's, you know, put on some more size and now he's qualified for the Olympia. Um, Regan's got a fantastic physique. I've always liked what he looks, his, his detail, his structure, um, small waistline, big, thick upper chest, great back, looks good from the front, back, and the side. Uh, let's see if he can put it all together for one day for the Olympia. Number 16, Max Charles. Max Charles has been up and coming for a long time. I think this is a couple times he's shown up at the Olympia. Uh, making progress throughout the years. Great delts. Again, that long torso, thick waistline tends to, I'd say, put a damper on his overall physique from the front, maybe from the side. If he can control his breathing, he'll do a lot better this time around. Just my opinion. And if you guys have comments, please put your comments in there too. I'm not right about all this stuff, but I've been known to pick some damn good uh, – um, Top five, top six in most shows, I could typically pull out a guy right away and say, okay, that guy won. This guy's not going to do well. Uh, but everyone has their own opinion. So this is based off my opinion as a coach of 25 years and what I've seen in judging shows and what I think criteria they look for. So please post your opinions, whether they be good or bad. Uh, Justin Rodriguez. Um, I don't know much about Justin, but based off the look and feel of his physique, he's got the great – a great taper down to the waistline. Those obliques do stand out a little bit. Um, not that it's a bad thing. I think some of these guys push the envelope on, you know, the size game. They got to be bigger because they don't match up against someone like Phil or, you know, Rami's 300 pounds and this guy's 220, 230. You know, Dexter's still 230 some pounds and he's still kicking ass and he's the oldest guy up there. So, I don't understand. Like, if you look at this guy's physique, you look at the arm structure, it's very good and balanced, great chest, great upper chest, good tricep sweep, great lats all the way to the bottom. Look at that lat. It's amazing. The issue is when you get into here, you start seeing this part, and this part looks like it's 
you know, a little thicker, but maybe it's the pose he's in. Sometimes that elbow's lower. Look at the angle of that elbow. It's up here, right? So sometimes posing, if you drop that elbow down and pull those lats and lift, suck in that rib cage, he'd make a lot better pose. Sometimes people don't pose very well. This is going to hurt their placings. Who we got next? Number 14. <clears throat> Akeem Williams, the beast from the East. Akeem is an amazing bodybuilder. Uh-oh. Hold on. Let's get back to Akeem here. There we go. Akeem is a very, very big, strong guy. I've watched him throughout the years training in New York. Um, I think Dave Plumbo is his trainer for a long, long time. And Akeem just, to me, is just a little too blocky in too many areas. You look at the detail of the chest, the, the thickness in here, to me, tells me that's some oil popping out there i know he jimmied it up a little bit big ball in here a ball up there that the muscles don't have balls they have striations so sorry akeem but i mean some of this just doesn't look right that squared off bicep looks a little fishy to me and your triceps compared to your biceps don't match extremely thick waistline but overall he's a big big thick dude gotta give him credit for that all right number 13 Raphael bren Deo. I've not heard of this guy before. I think I've maybe heard his name once. Um, looks like a pretty good physique, but uh, not the condition I think he's going to need to be in, in the Olympia to do well at all. Um, if he can dial that in, he's got pretty good sweep in the quads, nice long torso. Kind of reminds me of an older uh, or a guy back in the day named Lee Labrada. Um, good flaring uh, shoulders, good chest, decent sized arms, all match, legs match, but if you look in here, the detail, you've got to have that detail at this level. Number 12. We got number 12. Lee Sung Chul. I've been hearing a lot about this guy coming up the past year or so. I saw him on Instagram a couple of times. I think he just lacks the overall detail. Um, decent physique. Some of this in here looks a little bit awkward the way, it's, the way he's flexing. I don't know, understand how this is all – there's no flow here. You know, quads a little bit weak from the side. I mean, the, the big, big, thick glutes overshadow the outside sweep of the quad, take away the hamstring. This in here, you look at, there's not a lot of detail split between the arm and the deltoid. It's like one big muscle. Um, I think that's going to hurt him quite a bit. So, Number 11. Ian Valerier. Well, lots of talk. But he's been beat a few times. Uh, I think he qualified this year, I, I believe, by points. I think he may have won one show. Um, big guy, but, you know, again, this big, massive guy posing like this, to me, takes away a lot of that structure. You look at the shoulders, they come together. Yeah, you can see the chest flexing, and that's great. But I think that if he opens up his clavicles backwards to the rear, you're going to see a much thicker, wider person. Because right now, legs look a little – Imbalance compared to the delts and upper body. Number 10, getting into the gravy. Hunter Labrada. Now, to me personally, Hunter Labrada has all the tools to be an Olympia pro, to be an Olympia winner, to, you know, be that guy to beat over the next couple of years or so. Um, I know he's a young kid, but – the masses kids put on, the separation definition. This is not the best picture I've seen of him. There's an Instagram picture that he has no tan. It's, you know, kind of bad lighting. It's not jimmied whatsoever as far as, you know, paintbrush and stuff like that. But he looks pretty good. Uh, looks like he may have had a pec tear at one point right there. That could potentially hurt him. Um, we got to, you know, jimmy that up a little bit there, buddy. <laughs> A little Jimmy in there, a little cupcake, a little, little syringe, and, you know, do a little uh, Dr. Tony Hughes to Jimmy this up and make it look better. Um, yeah, I like Hunter. I think he's got a great back. He's got good sweep in his quads, really good detail. Look at all the different types of, you know, the, the, the vastus lateralis all popping out, the medial, everything's coming together. Inside here, you can almost see the uh, serratoris coming in. Waistline, eh. He's pushing the envelope. He gets a little bigger, it's going to get too thick, and it's going to hurt him. All right, number nine. There he is, Juan Morel, another beast from the East. 
Juan just, you know, for whatever reason, comes off at times. Um, he's always dialed in pretty good with his conditioning, but sometimes that conditioning hurts his size. I know he has to eat a ton of food to maintain his size and everything else, but I don't know. I mean, Juan's been coming up and coming up for a long time, and I, let's hope to see Juan place in that top ten again, push up near that sixth line. That'd be great. I don't know about you, but some of these new up and coming guys that are coming into the to the sport, um, I like them, you know, and especially someone like this guy Cedric, been around a long, long time. But it's always the same thing: will Cedric show up in shape? I don't understand how anyone at that level would not put the time in and not put the suffering in to get an excellent top condition for one day, especially with this kind of genetics. Like you have to understand. I've trained hundreds, if not thousands of people in my career. And I will tell you that there are some people genetically I could have a field day with. I could push them. I could cut their calories in half over time. I can put down no carbs, ramp up their cardio, ramp up their training, and everything I do, their body responds. Some people, I can do everything I could possibly think of and go back to the drawing board and read my old notes and you know, references and things I've done in the past with people and their bodies just are resistant. But Cedric, you know, genetically, he's got a great physique, balanced top to bottom, his shoulders, delts, chest, lats, back, legs, everything flows on him. Great personality, great person, veteran of the, you know, services. But at the end of the day, (laughs) he's still Cedric. So Cedric, if you hear this, I doubt you will. But Dial it in just once, man, just once. And if you can't hit it that time, that's fine. But just dial it all together and push push as hard as you can. Get to the top and let's win this show one time. Let's continue on here with number seven. Rolly Winkler. My goodness. What do you say about Rolly other than he's freaking huge? Look at these delts, these arms, the chest. Um, if you kind of look from here. So here, I don't know what you noticed, but Cal looks like Phil with a bigger chest, bigger traps. Um, I do know Rolly's waistline's hurt him in the past, but the last couple of years he's dialed it in. Legs look pretty good. He looks big. Yeah, you got one of these things right here. We all know what that is, injection oil. Don't think for a second these pros do not use oil. I'm telling you, all this, all this in here, and possibly that, outside sweep of the quads there's a lot of oil in these guys body if that wasn't true a 300 pound man who built all this muscle is not going to shrink down to 200 pounds in a couple years you know what i'm saying however raleigh is making a run for it he's improved every year over year let's see how he does this year i think he'll do pretty well there he is big rammy special invite so I recently just heard about the special invite and personally, I don't, um, I don't know that he, I guess should have got a personal invite, but I understand why he does. He's a fan favorite. He's huge. To me, he just stands out too much. He, he doesn't fit properly in a lineup. I went to the Olympia a couple of years in person. I saw him standing next to other bodybuilders, myself. He's big, but with clothes on, you wouldn't know he's that big, but what I do know about Rami is um, he's put together pretty good. I mean, if you look at this picture, this looks thicker. This looks smaller. Uh, it's just delts are, you know, his arms are overpowering his delts at this point, and I think that's a flaw. Um, if I picked it up into judging, I guarantee a judge in Olympia is going to pick it up as well too. I mean, his legs, awesome, big, huge, thick. The one thing I keep hearing about Rami is he never comes in conditioned enough. I don't agree with that because I've seen Remy come in pretty darn tight. Um, Phil isn't the tightest, grainiest, driest guy up there. Everybody wants to be dry and grainy. Well, that's great, but everybody wants to be a billionaire too, and that's probably not going to happen. Genetically, you can't just push anyone's body to be dry and grainy. Quick story, had a guy a couple years back, first show, tall guy, talking six foot over, lean, probably 185, 95, about 194 pounds, I think, halfway through the prep. Hey, can I start doing stairs two hours a week? And he was doing like 20, 30 minutes, four or five days a week. And I'm like, well, why do you want to do that? 
well, because the Boston Mass does it. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So this is your very first show. You're six over six foot tall. You're 190 pounds. And you want to do two hours of cardio on the stairs a day from 20 minutes. I'm like, there's no way you'll fall flat on your face. Well, why? Well, first of all, you're not jacked like the Boston Mass. Your body's not adapted to 20 years using chemicals. And the chemistry of that type of body as a consistent level is going to work in unison for a long time. You're just getting started, taking a minimal amount of chems. Genetically, you're not predisposed to growing that much because we've proven that in a year time, you put on about 10 pounds. So, you know, I mean, you can't. You can try, but I'm not going to be responsible for it. And I said, I'll give you a week, maybe a week and a half at the most. Four days into it, he's like, I'm done. <laughs> So word to the wise, do not chase your conditioning. Do not push your cardio to the max in the beginning. Once you do two hours of cardio and you got 10 weeks left, there's nowhere to go. You're going to fall flat on your face. Hormonally, you're going to die. But Big Rammy, he's back. Let's see. Number five. There he is. The Blade, Dexter Jackson, the most winningest bodybuilder in history, the oldest guy on stage. Still up there kicking ass, taking names. Great structure. Uh, has like that fill type look with the big biceps that come out, the triceps, the balance, the tiny waist. Now, I, I, I've seen Dexter in the past couple of years start to have a little bit more distension than normal. Um, he's been doing some things with Charles Glass. They're claiming this new product they have is dialing in his stomach. Now, last time I saw him compete, it looked better, but sometimes it means just a little bit breathing. You know, if you breathe – learn how to hold those abs in for, you know, four or five weeks out and control those abdominals during your turns, which I think Phil should have done more training on and for the last Olympia with that surgery. It killed him. It just killed him. So, Dexter, I'm sure he's going to be top five again. Let's see. Someone comes out of shape, he'll sneak in there. Up next, number four. Hottie Chopin. Now, I'm not sure if Hottie made it this year because of the – COVID and all the other stuff going on. I haven't heard the latest, but I'm pretty sure he's going to be at the Olympia. I like Hani Chopin. I think he's got a great physique. He brings back that dry look again that everybody loves, the freaky dry, you know, all that stuff. But I don't really think that the Olympia is about dry and hard. I think it's about aesthetics. I think it's about muscle mass, separation, and how your body structure flows with what, what you have. In other words – let's take his physique and turn it into a dry, grainy, hard Dorian. Does that mean he wins the show? Maybe not because you're not going to see all this nice detail he has in his muscle. I mean, his legs are awesome. Some of the best legs I've seen in a long time. A lot of striations of feathers coming in. You know, if he learns how to flex that better on the outside, you'll see more there. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, is Hani a top six? We're going to find out in a couple of weeks. Number three. Here we go. William Bonac, another fan favorite. Bonac's been up there, you know, number one. He's beat uh, – I think he's beat Han – um, I think he's beat uh, Big Rammy. Uh, he's come close to beating Phil. He's right there knocking on the door. However, I think that Bonac just lacks a little bit more height to match up to these bigger guys. He's kind of dwarfed over a little bit. But then if he could beat Rammy, he could beat anybody, right? So we'll see. William, I like William. There's been some turmoil with him in the past year. Coach, blah, blah, blah. That's all died down at this point. You know, he's off and running to the Olympia again. So we'll see what happens. Number two, <clears throat> the man, Phil Heath. Phil Heath's always been one of my favorites. I uh, never count him out. Um, I didn't think he really beat Roden until I saw the pictures afterwards because it was my biased opinion. But – um, it was close. I think that there's a couple of shots of, of Roden standing side by side with him on certain poses that he just destroyed Phil's uh, lack of structure of width. But I, I still think Phil's got a great flow in his body. His legs match the upper body. I know he's had the surgery. That's all been taken care of from what we're hearing. Phil's been kind of quiet this year. Um, if Phil gets on stage, just watch out because they love him. The fans, you know, are 
50-50 with Phil. Some like him, some don't. He's a little bit outspoken. Um, but at the same time, try to find a flaw. I don't hear too many people ever say anything about a flaw that he has, other than his clavicles. But I don't think that's going to hurt him because look at those delts. He's got some big sweeping delts. The arms match the delts. The chest is pretty good. Great legs. Awesome back. Um, criticize him all you want. Uh, he's won, what, seven times? So, you know, good luck to everyone else out there. Last but not least, one more to go. Brandon Curry, the reigning Mr. Olympia. Now, if you look at this, you look at this picture, and you look at the picture of Phil, it's not the same pose, but, you know, going from picture to picture, it really makes Brandon look really bad. Sorry, Brandon. I think Brandon has a great physique. He's done a lot of hard work. You know, he does have biceps. They look like balls, which means a lot of oil in there. The lats, flaring lats, good chest. Look, look at the separation in the upper delts in his upper part of his chest. Look at that separation right there. That's incredible. Separation in here, the lats, the lines. However, let's look at this right here. We don't know what that is. And then here, a lot of lack of detail. Now, that could be bad lighting. Who knows? However, I would love to see Phil stand next to Brandon and Boniac and Dexter and Rami, all in that top five. And believe it or not, I'd like to see Hunter and as long as they're in condition. And um, who's the other guys thinking of? Hanny Chopin. I mean, it's going to be a great Olympia. There's a lot. Of, if I can keep going on and on about who I want to see in the top five on a pose down, that makes for a great Olympia. Now, Sean Roden's not going to be there. Um, I think that kind of sucks. Um, you know, he's innocent until proven guilty. Let the guy compete. That stuff's died down. I don't know what he did or didn't do, but, you know, we need Sean Roden in there. So we got Dexter. We got Brandon. We got Phil. We got Rami, Hunter. And maybe and Hani Chopin and a couple other guys, maybe Regan Grimes. I love to see Regan Grimes, Grimes compared to some of these other guys because we've never seen that before. And I think a lot of times they get overlooked because, well, you know, he placed second the last time or third. So we have to go down the row with these top six and give them their due and be respectful, which I understand that. But if you rotate in someone like Hunter next to Phil, next to Brandon, and then rotate Rami in between them, and then put someone out there like Eon Valier, um, and put them in the lineup with these top six and compare them just for a couple of seconds. Do a front double bicep, do a rear double bicep, do a side chest and maybe an overall abs, walk them off to the side, and then compare them. Give Regan a chance to jump in that top six and get a look. You know, he might surprise people. I don't know. But Regan, everyone looks great by themselves. Regan looks better. I mean, Regan looks, you know, good. So it's a matter of what the judges want to see at that time. Who do you think will win? Comment below. I think Phil, hands down, wins it again. No contest. Um, I typically think that Phil is going to walk on stage, blow everybody away with his confidence and his attitude and his physique, and it's going to shine. I will tell you this. I met Phil – a week after his first Olympia. And I stood next to him. I'm going, I'm 230 pounds. Phil's 245. And I'm standing next to him. I'm going, he's not really like structure bigger than me. But holy shit, his muscles are just like massive. They're compact and massive at the same time. And when, he, when I saw him off stage, he went up to do his uh, walk on stage for his um, – you know, posing, guest posing, I, I, people were like, you can just hear the audience just go, whoa. Some people were like, holy shit. They're like, what the fuck? You just can't imagine what Phil looks like when he take, when he, when he's wearing clothes and gets on that stage, it, it, it doesn't look human. He just has this look. Same with Dorian. When I saw Dorian back in the day in 1991 backstage in my show I was at, he sat in this little folding chair, and I'm like, I, I can't see the chair. I mean, the man's 5'10", 305 at 6%, six weeks out. And I remember Gary Eater looking down going, looking at his calves, just like shaking his head like, what the – how do you – where do – I mean, it's, 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 it's crazy. So if you haven't been to Olympia – 
please go. Um, I know it's been moved to Orlando, Florida, which is kind of cool. I mean, I know, uh, you know, Vegas is the place to be for that, but um, I, I like Orlando. It's a very nice city. So if you get a chance, come out to the Olympia and uh, post below. Let's post your top six. I want to see who you think is going to win. Is it going to be Phil, Boniac? I um, mean, obviously a lot of people want Ramy to win, but I just realistically don't see that happening um, unless he I, drops 20 pounds and comes in retarded, shrink wrap shredded. Other than that, I don't see him winning at all. All right, guys, that's the wrap-up. That's my my peek into the 2020 Mr. Olympia. Stay tuned. Uh, I'm going to start doing some more videos. I've been asked for a long, long time to keep doing videos since Enhanced Athlete. And, you know, I just haven't done – there's a lot of other things I do in my life that take up my time. And um, I just haven't done, dedicated enough to these videos. Um, I'm not sure I have the best voice for videos, but I try. Um, if you want me to do some more videos on different topics, please post that below as well. And uh, we'll see you soon. And here's go. Time for Olympia. A couple of weeks away. Coach Ken signing off. Have a great day.